Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about the Metal Cloak Duraflex joints. The question is, how do you know when they go bad and how do you change them out? Today I'm going to go over changing these out um, for sure. I have a few that are bad with no doubt. One thing I, I don't particularly care for about the Duraflex joint is when they start to wear and uh, you know they age, they start making that kind of noise. And when you watch my videos when I'm on the trails, you hear that and it drives me nuts. So that's one, one way to tell. Another way to tell is if you come over to this side here, these, uh, these joints are supposed to be tightened in at ride height. And if you do, they should stay in one spot like this one's doing. However, if you look at this one here, it just moves on its own because the joint up there is just completely shot. So I'm gonna pull these apart, let you take a look, show you how to rebuild them and reinstall. Here's another one that's pretty bad right next to this one. You can hear the squeaking, but it doesn't even hold on its own and it's torqued down correctly. But you can just see all the movement in there. This joint's completely shot. So let's get them taken apart. Can't see much inside this one, but <laughs> you tell what the uh, rocks do to you. You go off-roading enough, that's what your brackets end up looking like. So I'm gonna have to get those straightened out too. Those things just got beat to hell. They're supposed to be straight up and down, not curved in like that. All right, let's go take those joints apart, see what we got. Okay, so I laid out my replacement uh, Duraflex joints. Um, as you can see here, you have your lower control arm joints. Those are on that side. These are your uppers. And the thing's kind of curious to me, and I don't know that it makes a difference because when you think about the way these are held in place, it's held in place with clamping force. So the whole size shouldn't matter, but I was just a little bit uh, curious as to why, you know, this, this hole's definitely bigger than this one and that's even a little bit different than these. And I'm just not sure exactly why um, they do that. I'm gonna give them a call and ask them about that and see what they have to say. But anyway, let's get to taking apart that uh, upper control arm. So the way these bushings, or I'm sorry, the way these joints are, are uh, put in here, you're gonna see that you have snap rings on either side um, you got to pull those out, pull one out, push the joint out through the other side and you can replace it. So first thing we're going to do, get the snap ring out. Make sure you watch your eye. These things fling, they're going to pop you pretty good. So with that one out on that side, you can just push through on this side. Sometimes it might take a hammer, sometimes it might not. I'm gonna leave uh, that snap ring in there because I'll just push the joint back through the other side. Uh, you look at the wear inside here. I'll take a little uh, something to clean that up and get that out of there. So looking at the joint itself, you can see how it eventually, over time, it separated and broke. These things have been in there for 
oh gosh, probably eight years. I've rebuilt them uh, a couple times. Not rebuilt them, but just uh, um, put their Teflon paste on there a couple times. Now they are definitely tow. So if one's like this, I'm gonna replace them all because the others probably aren't far behind. Okay, so taking apart the lower, you're gonna notice one side does not have the snap ring. The other side does, and that's obviously the side you gotta work. So first thing we're gonna do is take out the snap ring and then uh, get that bushing out, get it changed out, clean everything up. Again, watch your eyes here. This thing comes flying out of here. Sometimes snap rings don't come out that easy, I can tell you that, but um, you just, you just got to keep working it. Take your old bush in your head. So yeah, this one here, you can definitely see the tearing there, how it came around from the bonded uh, vulcanized side there, or bonded vulcanized rubber, what, whatever the hell it is. Looking inside there, this stuff is the uh, leftover Teflon paste that's normal. Um, we'll get this one cleaned up and get it put back together with the new one. All right, put it back together just like the other one, except for the fact you don't have to put a snap on this side. So make sure again, your shiny side to the inside that goes in. Take your new joint. These are already supposed to come with a little bit of the Teflon paste on there. And while the uppers seem to have it, these don't. So I'm gonna add a little bit just to be safe. Boy, this thing's tight compared to the other one, that's for sure. They're nice and square. So I'll tell you that's not seated, so get a little camera tap it in. And you'll see it snap in once it gets there. So that's that for that side. Time for this side. Now this side here does have two snap rings. Um, so let me get started on that. Was 
This one's popping right out like the other one, which tells you how worn it was. This one here. This one here also has the uh, separation right along there on that side. Same thing on this side too. I'm not sure if that's a separation that goes all the way through or what it is. Let me poke it with the screwdriver and see what we get. It doesn't go in too far, but it uh, definitely still worn. So good thing I'm replacing it. It was only a matter of time before it ended up like that. So good. Let's get it cleaned up, get another one installed. So when you go to rebuild these, um, Metal Clock says it only takes just a little bit of the Teflon paste. So only uh, add a little bit of that and you'll be good with that. Make sure you get your snap ring to the right side. So that's my dark side, which is inside. Washer, shiny side, facing the joint, joint, Shiny side down, snap ring, I just saw that go in, but I'm gonna double tap on this just to make sure. Yep, that one's in. And there you have it. You have a rebuilt lower control arm and a rebuilt upper control arm. Do the same thing to your other arms and it's, uh, it's a fairly simple, straightforward process. My advice obviously would be to do one arm at a time so that way you're not struggling trying to get everything back in if things pop out of place. So um, that's it, pretty straightforward. All right, that's it for rebuilding a control arm. Very simple, straightforward process. And I'm gonna give you a bonus tip right now on straightening these brackets out. So if you go willing hard enough, you bend these brackets out, how do you straighten them out? It's real simple. Get yourself a big old crescent wrench and put your crescent wrench right on the bracket about like so. And you're gonna just bend it out until it straightens it out. And then you get it kind of right where you need it, just like that one. Same thing on this side, come up. This one's got a pretty bad, I may have to take a couple wax at it. Yeah, you know what, for what I got going on, I'm pretty happy with that. So that's all there is to it. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next one.